Hello, believe it or not, but by the end of this video, you'll be able to make this scene that you're seeing on the screen right now. So let's get started. In the previous video, we looked at how we can use Quixel assets to make a scene really quickly. And now we're going to focus on using external assets from sites such as TurboSquid, Sketchfab, CG Trader, and so on. There are a plethora of free assets that you can use from all over the internet. So in this tutorial, we'll extend on what we've learned earlier and we will start importing external assets. We're gonna talk about the various types of formats that we can import we're going to talk about materials just very briefly there will be follow-up videos going into details on how the material editor works with that being said first things first we're going to find a model i really like the game super meat boy i found a free model of him on sketchfab i've linked it in the description and we're going to pull him into unreal engine so that we can get a cool scene with ultra realistic super meat boy in 3d now that's pretty cool now we're going to download this asset we'll see that there are various options the one that we're going to select is the object format now you get various different formats the ones that are most common are FBX and object files. You don't have to worry about exactly what that means, but basically, in short, your 3D modelers work in software such as Blender, Cinema 4D, 3D Studio Max, there's plenty of them. And, and then sometimes they need to export these assets into external software such as game engines. And these formats are something that the game engines can understand. What's really cool about this, it actually allows the 3D artists to bake in their textures, their normal textures, everything that they need in the game engine or whatever external software that they're gonna be using into that export file so that you can just seamlessly use it in external software. Once you've downloaded this, we're going to extract the folder. You'll see there is a source and textures folders. We are going to go into the source folder. You'll see that there's another file that we'll have to extract. It's like some weird Russian doll thing that's going on, but just extract that as well. Now, the next thing we wanna do is create a project in Unreal Engine. We'll open up the editor, just like we've done in the previous tutorial. We will create a scene, enable ray tracing, and then we will load up the project. Once done, you will have to drag the object file into the project. We can do this by going into the file explorer, dragging the object file into Unreal Engine's content folder. I just created a subfolder to keep it neat, but you don't have to worry about that. Once we drag it in, a pop-up will appear. We will leave everything as default and click import. Once done, you will be presented with two files. The one is a material and the other one is the mesh of Super Meat Boy. Now, what is a material? A material is something that exists within Unreal Engine, also known as shaders, that tells the renderer how to place these various textures on a 3D model. Sounds complicated, you don't have to worry about any of that because it is all done for you in this exercise. And in most cases, with any assets that you use, this will already be set up. Now a mesh is just a 3D object that consists out of a bunch of vertices, faces, and polygons. It sounds very technical, it isn't really, it's just a bunch of dots in 3D space connecting to make up a 3D model. But again, you don't have to worry about that right now. What you'll notice is that our material is white once we open it. This is wrong. We need to now add our textures. So in the folder that we've downloaded, you will see that there is a textures folder with three textures in it. We will pull it in. The three textures are a diffuse texture, a normal texture, and an ambient occlusion texture. The diffuse texture is just the basic colors of your object. The normal textures is essentially a way of faking detail within your 3D model. It tells the renderer how to handle light at various points within your model. This is important because it gives that very realistic small fine details that's not always possible to do within game engines due to the fact that you can't have these massive high poly assets. Now I know Unreal Engine 5 supports Nanite but it's still good practice to keep your meshes down to a minimum because it takes up space and also it can make the software run really slow. And then we've got ambient occlusion. Now this one is a little bit more difficult to understand, but all you need to know for now is it's essentially telling the renderer how to handle any subtle environmental lighting. It makes a very subtle difference, but if you have the ambient occlusion texture, add it anyway. Now that we understand the textures, we're gonna hook them up. We're gonna open up the material, drag in our three textures from the content browser, and we will hook them up. The diffuse texture goes into the diffuse, normal into the normal slot, and ambient occlusion into the ambient occlusion slot. We will press apply and you will see magically that this material is updated and applied to our Super Meat Boy model. Now it's gonna look pretty f freaky just because I don't think Super Meat Boy was made for 3D. The cool thing is now it's up to you. 
we can go ahead and create a scene and take a screenshot and share it with our friends and family. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in my Super Meat Boy model, go into Quixel Mega Scan Assets, found a bit of foliage that I've dragged in. You'll also see that there are a bunch of materials within Quixel Mega Scans. You can look around there and just drag and drop it on any object that you want. I decided to get a grass texture and drop it onto the default rectangle, which serves as the floor in the scene. Then I just positioned the viewport in a specific way so that I can get a nice screenshot. The way we get a screenshot is in the hamburger menu at the top left there is a high resolution screenshot option you can press that and it will save out the screenshot for you now there are different ways that you can capture these screenshots in a better looking way we can use cameras the movie render queue and sequences but it is a little bit more complicated and we will go into that in the future if you are interested and you can't wait just google sequencer and movie render queue, you will find a bunch of tutorials and you can get some really high quality renders that you can show to people. With this being said, this is my second tutorial on Unreal Engine for beginners. I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. It really was a lot of fun and I really like engaging with you guys in the comments. I will be bringing out a bunch more of these tutorials as well as updates on the game that I'm building. I would love for you to tag along. This is a very exciting journey for me as always. Happy game development, until next time.